It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. And it's that time of the morning for our weekly health segment. And today we're taking a look at something that will affect most of us in some way during our lives, whether through our own experience or that from the experience of a loved one. I'm talking about cancer. And we're going to look at the topic from a slightly different angle this morning. And joining us today from the UK is Professor Dan Burke, who spent the majority of his life studying cancer and has taken an integrative approach to the disease. So, Professor Burke, welcome to Expresso. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, first of all, tell us what brings you to South Africa? A mixture of business and some vacation. Oh. Being up country. <laughs> yeah. Now, we've spoken about integrative medicine on our show before, but from your, ex from your perspective, how would you explain the concept to somebody who really hasn't thought about it before? In its simplest form, and especially in the context of cancer, yeah. it is the use of a variety of different therapeutic approaches for the benefit of the individual patient, and right. I stress the individual. individual. Mm. So it, each, it's different for each person essentially. It's yeah. different for each person. Uh, in the context of cancer it doesn't restrict itself to compound based therapies such as pharmaceutical drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it uses diet based and herbal medicine based but it goes beyond compound based. It will, it will use the, your mind, how you think about your di disease and illness is very important. It looks at uh, how you support the way your mind, so yoga and lots yeah. of lifestyle things yeah. like, like that. So you've spent most of your life studying cancer. What is the link between cancer and integrative me medicine? First thing is I'm impressed how developed it is here yeah. in South Africa, uh, certainly compared to my own country and many other European countries. In the context of cancer, the link is very... The most obvious link is that our diet yeah. has an enormous impact on whether we get cancer. And unfortunately, most sure. people will get a diagnosis and then how we deal with it. So in, in very simple terms, the link is between the illness and the diet. And what, yeah. uh, I think it's very important to stress that integrative approach doesn't, uh, it, 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 it doesn't remove any particular approach. So, for example, it, 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 does, it doesn't restrict itself, the most obvious, it doesn't restrict itself to uh, pharmaceutical anti-cancer medicines, but it doesn't abstain from it either. Mm. It, it, it chooses to use the best of, of all the different approaches. Uh, often it will be a single health practitioner, and, and in integrative you have a variety of different uh, expert health practitioners. Mm -hmm. Often it will be a single one, and where, and where uh, medicines, uh, pharmaceutical uh, anti-cancer medicines are involved, of course it has to be a doctor. Uh, but you also have other non-medically qualified uh, health professionals. And then, as I said, the mind's important, so you have psychologists as well, uh, and cooks. You yeah. know, you, you're going to have a, a cookery session and you can, uh, you can cook healthy or you can cook non-healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Professor Burke. We're going to continue this conversation with you because I, I definitely want to get into the lifestyle aspect of what we're talking about right now and why doctors and patients are moving more towards the integrative approach to cancer. But talking about cooking, we're heading to the kitchen where we're making another healthy meal that can only benefit the body. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Well, we are back and we are still joined by UK Professor Dan Burke and we are talking about integrative approach to when it comes to discussing and uh, tackling cancer. Now, uh, Professor, we, we asked you, we wanted to know earlier, why are more patients and doctors heading towards integrative mm. medicine? Mm. Well, very simply, recognition of the limitations of pharmaceutical uh, anti-cancer medicine is one of the single largest uh, reasons. Uh, and also the uh, widening knowledge that uh, the multifactorial approach to uh, dealing with cancer uh, is more effective than a single approach. Mm. And of course, it's, it's, uh, you, we talked about a lot of things called lifestyle, mm. what you put into your body, yeah. exercise. But your extensive mm. research has led you to something that's called salvestrols. Mm. Now, mm. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> In layman's terms, mm. could you please explain to us what it is? I'll, yes, I'll say what they are and then I'll explain yes. it. Yes. Uh, they are natural 
anti-cancer pro-drugs. Oh. So that needs explaining. Natural anti-cancer anti pro-drugs. Pro -drugs. They're in many of the food plants that okay. we normally eat in a good healthy diet. They're in fruits and vegetables okay. and herbs. Yeah. Uh, I was, until I retired recently, I was a university pharmacologist. Yeah. Uh, I specialised in the molecular science of medicines. Okay. Uh, and we made some discoveries uh, and because, as you said, I'd had a thread of cancer research all the way through, what we discovered gave us an idea that we could maybe uh, design a better type of anti-cancer pharmaceutical and that what we would design, because of the way it was designed to work, would uh, have far fewer side effects. Okay. This is the big problem with yes. nurse. And yes. we were successful uh, in a prototype in the laboratory. We, we did design a prototype uh, anti-cancer drug, a pro-drug. A pro-drug, um, it, it's something which is, is inactive but harmless to start with. Okay. So if it's in, it's in the food, we've eaten the plant, yeah. we've absorbed the good, healthy, health-supporting okay. molecules. Yeah. If they're pro-drugs, like salvestrols, they're actually, this is a paradox, they start off being inactive, yeah. but they're not going to harm us. Okay. But the, the first important discovery we made was like the trigger mechanism, it's an enzyme, uh, the name of it doesn't matter yeah. right now, yeah. but it's a trigger mechanism and, and it's largely confined to inside cancer cells. So I think you'll, you'll, you'll guess what's going to happen. The compound uh, is, is harmless until it, and it goes around the blood and it gets in the cancer cell yeah. and it's still harmless, but now the trigger enzyme it, it, it converts it to something very potently anti-cancer, but it's, wow. it's converted inside the cancer cell. Wow. And then once it's, it's highly reactive, it hits its target, it deals with the cancer cell. I mean, there's a rather violent metaphor. Someone said, well, it's like a, a grenade where the pin is only pulled out inside the cancer cell. Oh, wow. And because once it's made, it, it, it's reactive for just a short time, it's then gone before it can uh, do harm to the rest of the but body. That's groundbreaking the, the, stuff, though. The, the, the prototype pharmaceutical was successful in the laboratory. Okay. It's now in the hands of a biotech of company. It, it may or may not ever see the clinic, but much more importantly, that's how we were put on the trail that's of amazing. these natural cells. And Professor Nature is a very, very clever person. Yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> well incredible. done. Wow. Well, that we'll, is amazing. Yes. We'll continue our chat with Professor Burke in a short while. Remember, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to also shed the focus on our furry friends and this time tackling the kennel cough. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. We are joined by UK professor D uh, Dan Burke. He's sharing with us some really incredible groundbreaking approaches to cancer uh, prevention. And not just prevention, but cancer in general. But I would like to talk prevention now. Mm. Um, we all talk about this term, Professor Burke, that um, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. But what does prevention look like? when it comes to someone who is uh, sitting with a situation where cancer is involved in their lives? It's all to do with dose. Okay. And it, it, it's illogical that um, uh, pharmacological therapy, that's medicines, uh, very often uh, uh, they recognize the importance of dose when it comes to prescription medicines. They completely ignore dose when it comes to lifestyle. Um, our diet is scientific terms, it's, it is a low-dose chronic preventative therapy. In other words, you'd need to eat an awful lot of oranges and the bits we don't normally eat, the rind, oh, wow. in, in order to get enough of the health-supporting molecules wow. to affect an attempt at a cure. Uh, what you can do is get a lower dose uh, every day, as long as you do something every week, probably the age of 20 is not too late to start. Uh, uh, and that's got a good chance of acting preventatively. Really? Do, yes, because you don't have a lot of a disease like cancer to start with. Yeah. You have a lot, lot more than you think you do by the time that they've detected it, but that's a different, uh, different uh, conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so diet is low dose all the time, every week do something, start when you're young. Okay. When you've got the problem, and now in the UK, one in person in every two 
it statistically is likely to be diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Uh, you, you have to up the dose. Mm. And that's, if I may say so, where supplements come in. Okay. Uh, because what you have in supplement is a concentrated essence of selected health supporting chemicals that some scientists has discovered in the laboratory. Oh, but yeah. you can't get them in that dose mm. uh, naturally. And what other lifestyle changes can someone incorporate, you know, going forward? Oh, okay, uh, I mean, this will only be some of them. Uh, yeah. Obviously, diet. Diet is crucially yeah. important. We find this uh, with salvestrols. Uh, the, uh, if you're taking them in concentrated form, in, in, in say, a capsule, you, people respond much better if they also have a healthy diet. Mm. The next bit is going to be contentious because uh, government, our government says, oh, organically grown fruit and vegetables yeah. is no better. That's wrong. There is, there is ample scientific evidence, not, not just from us, but loads of scientific research groups and papers, that the health-supporting natural molecules in fruits and vegetables are, are tens of times higher in organically grown, usually. It's, 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 because, it's because of what is not done yeah. to, the, uh, to the fruit and vegetable. Uh, uh, something else, just relax. It's how you think about oh, your illness. Goodness. It's easy to say it's hard to do. Yeah. It's not just compound-based therapies. Lifestyle, I don't need to tell you. It, it, it's, it's how you are. If, if every day you were, wake up and you're stressed, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be detrimental to your chances of having a good outcome. And I would say something that uh, I have a couple of chaps, well, they are chaps, uh, um, one is American, one is British, who I, I use as my cancer gurus. They don't know it. Okay. One, um, and one, uh, one of them points out, uh, he's, he's an oncologist, he's, he's a very important professor, um, actually, it might be useful to stop concentrating on trying to cure cancer. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, eminently possible to uh, just try to control it, not in everybody, obviously, but if you can start soon enough, you have a diagnosis. It can be controlled for many people. That takes the f a lot of the fear away. And there are other diseases of our lives, not cancer, that we already control. And, and a shift of emphasis might be quite useful. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that, Professor <laughs> Burke. Well, we will continue with Pro Professor Burke when we get back. Um, we're going to head on over to you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Gonna lie, I could sit with Professor Dan Burke all day just listening to him talk us through this entire process of uh, an integrative approach to cancer. But Dr. Burke, I mean, Professor Burke, I wanted to ask you a question. How close are we to defeating cancer for good? Uh, at a guess, about 20 years. Uh, that's an wow. estimate from a good friend who's highly placed really? in the pharmaceutical industry. The different, have you heard of the Human Genome Project? Yes. That was uh, the first real knowledge we, we uh, were given of the gene level problems. What, why is a cancer a cancer? Yeah. That then spawned lots of, 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 of uh, follow on studies. For the first time since I was a biochemistry student, yeah. uh, that was a long time ago, uh, the cancer scientists now have a very good idea of what it is at the molecular level that is going wrong with the cancer. What's the difference between a normal healthy cell and a cancer cell? Mm. In order to develop medicines, pharmaceutical medicines, they need to know what's going wrong. They have to have a molecular target. Wow. They've now got molecular targets uh, and they have already developed. You've, you've heard of uh, Herceptin and Gleevec probably. These are uh, early examples of what are called the targeted anti-cancer drugs. But the time scale I've been given is probably 20 years. Wow. There is an ongoing, uh, when we've solved the problem of targets, which I think has, they know where they're going, the scientists. Cancer's a clever devil, mm. and whatever we throw at it, it's good at mm. defeating us, and the ongoing problem is resistance. I think everyone knows. And paradoxically, that's where nutritional therapy comes in. Mm. Uh, if I, there is a comp Do you like curry? Do you like Indian curry? I love curry. You know the yellow stuff, the turmeric? Turmeric, yeah. That, that has a very, a, a very potent pharmacological molecule called curcumin. It's confusing, not cumin, that's one yeah. of the spices. Curcumin. Uh, curcumin, uh, you could call the emperor of anti-cancer uh, phytonutrients. Wow. Uh, yeah, because 
it's now shown in the in the in the laboratory this is you know proper molecular science to target so many of the events that go wrong that make a cancer cell not a normal cell mm -hmm. and i'm going to take this opportunity for any doctors out there yeah. uh, oncologists when you're trying targeted uh, new targeted anti cancer the problem is going to be resistance they're great for a month or so and then they stop working yeah. Curcumin uh, has, I think, a jolly good chance of lessening uh, the chance of uh, slowing down the onset of resistance. Uh, and so just consider giving some curcumin alongside the targeted ones. And who knows, you might find your patients uh, develop resistance more slowly. But resistance is going to be the problem. Okay. Resistance is key. Well, yeah. well, Professor Burke, you also said we shouldn't focus on, you know, necessarily finding the cure, but uh. keeping cancer at bay. Mm. Um, how, how, why, why is it more important? Will they still get a, the same lifespan by just keeping it at bay instead of focusing on finding a, a I, cure? I, I think it's eminently possible. I think we do need a, a big shift of focus by the specialist uh, oncologists, uh, the, the, the non-medically qualified therapists, they're already there, of course. Um, cancer is, for various reasons, primarily a disease of old age. And that's one of the reasons why there's more of it from the latter part of the 20th century. Before that, people tended not to reach that old age. So, so when you get a cancer diagnosis, you're already usually in the second half of your life. So, you, so the time scare span you have to keep going is shorter. And it, the many diseases are already controllable. Uh, and one of these very eminent uh, people I regard as my guru, he said, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. Mm. If we can, and it is controllable. It's not always controllable. Um, another eminent uh, uh, scientist, uh, oncologist said, a cancer that is small enough and growing slowly enough yeah. is not necessarily dangerous. Sure. We should aim to try and keep our foot on it. Just keep your foot on it. Thank and, you so much, yeah. Professor Dan Burke. We would love to. We should get you your own show. I feel <laughs> Professor Burke needs his own show. Thank you so much for introducing us to the groundbreaking work with Salvestrals, of course. You. you know, the fact that uh, in terms of a time span, we're looking at maybe 20 years from now, where we could be finding a cure to cancer. And uh, it's just been very encouraging. But, but, but there will be. They will be. There will, yes. will be. It's very, very encouraging. Thank you so much for being here. You are absolutely incredible. Thank you for inviting me. Wonderful.